Take your clan boss from two keys to one key. Many strategies, they will all help you. Let's go. What is up guys, MTG Jedi here. Couple quick things before we get into the meat of the video. I was able to successfully link all of my referral accounts here. Um, we talked in yesterday's video about a brand new device. I also, big shout out to the comment section on my last video as well. I was also able to delete Raid off my computer and reinstall it with the referral links for these other two accounts. So there you have options and we will get a couple rewards here for that as well. So if you're trying to link your referral accounts, make sure you check out that previous video and also the comment section, a lot of very helpful things over there. That is not, you know, we're not going in detail over there today. Make sure that you check uh, the website, mtgjedi.com, for all of your pack offers as well. Okay, now, we just got an announcement from Polarium uh, telling us about the 10x for this weekend, okay? So, the first champion on the 10x is none other than Chogger. And I actually think I would love to have this guy. He's one of my favorite champions as far as looks go in the game. Um, but I am not pulling Void Shards this weekend. No, I am not. Uh, the next champion on the list um, for Void Champions would be Urigrim. I do not think that this guy is worth pulling for. But if you happen to get him, he's pretty decent. After he was nerfed, he's just decent. Like, he's not OP. He's okay. He is still good, but he's not like, oh my goodness, let's pull Void Shards. All right, now, the next champion on the list is somebody that I am very familiar with. And that is going to be... That is going to be Bad El Kazar, okay? Bad El Kazar on the 10x list. He's a crazy good champion. I use him in many, many teams. Is he worth pulling for? Maybe, okay? But the other champion on the 10x, and there's only two. Wait, one. Bad El. Oh, snap. I did not even see this champion. This is my. Uh, number two most wanted champion, and that is Calvalax. I want a second one. Calvalax on the 10X. I completely missed that. Shout out to my dude, Jay Giggs. I know you're trying to get a Calvalax as well. Um, I would definitely love a Calvalax, so hopefully I can get one this weekend. And then last but not least is our new Knights Revenant champion, Theodore, who is an absolute Beast, monster, solo specialist, um, crazy good poisoner. Uh, there's tons of videos out on him, so I didn't make one myself. But this guy is so good, I would love to have him on my account. He's got, like, spikes in his body. It kind of freaks me out a little bit. But, uh, anyway, this guy is amazing, okay? We're gonna mention a bunch of these champions in today's video as well, okay? Um... And then epics on the list would be Venomage, Scabrius, and Aox, okay? Um, Venomage is one of my, you know, favorite epics in the game, actually. Scabrius I hate with a passion, but some people like him. And Aox is good as well. So if you need to pull for the fusion this weekend, which I will be pulling for the fusion this weekend, okay? We're going to end up with some extra fragments on Anchorite. Whatever, I don't care. It's fine. But... Uh, we are still only halfway on Wuji and Carolinia, okay? So I am definitely pulling. I want to finish the fusion. That's definitely going to happen. Um, I have some ancient shards that need pulled. <laughs> so we're definitely going to do that tomorrow. All right, now, um, as for today, you really want to know how to transition your champion's your clan boss team from a one key or from a two key to a one key, okay? Um, frequently, 
when I build this Bat Eater team that's very popular in my clan, um, you can see that... Some people... Is there is there anybody who's two-keying in my clan with this team? No. Okay, everybody in my clan is one-keying with this team. Okay, but... Uh, shout out to my new new clan mates, Old Fart and uh, Psalmist. I don't think he's uh, got a key in yet, but... Um, yeah, so you can see here down here, Share a Pony, uh, definitely going to be a two keying, but very close to a one key. So how can we transition this from a two key to a one key like I've done here and some other people as well? And not only that, but how can you do that on your account? Okay, well, number one, you really need a clan boss team that's going twice for each one of the each one of the clan bosses turns. And that typically involves a Seeker or someone like the Turn Meter Boost. So uh, check out mtgjedi.com under the Clan Boss section if you need a new team. Like if you have a team that's going one for one, you need to have a really powerful team like this right here. Uh, Judas's team, okay? Um, let's see down here. Yeah, Arbol. Um, this is going to be a one-for-one -one team as well. Over here, Sidonia, this is going to be a one-for-one -one team as well, all right? So those one-for-one -one teams, they can one-key, but it's much, much harder. When you're going twice, when you have a Seeker or a Deacon or somebody in your team, you are having so many more attacks, it's way, way easier to get that one-key. So step one is determine whether your clan boss team can one key or not. Okay, that's step one. Step two is look at the champions in your team, okay? And that's uh, that's the main thing that I want to cover here today, and then we will also get to step three. So, you want to make sure that you're using the best poisoners, the best decreased defense and weakened champions, counter or ally attack, and then the best DPS champion. Okay, so we're going to go over all of that today. So, when we talk about... I might need to make this a little bit smaller here like that. Okay, cool. Uh, when we talk about the best poisoners, these are the champions that are on my list. Dark Kale, Frozen Banshee, Occult Brawler, Urigrim, Chogger, Venomage, Bad L, Rowan, Urticata, Nethril, Narma, and the new guy, Theodore. And, like, I feel like this is perfect timing for this 10x and my planned video for today, because, like, half of the champions on the list are in, in the 10x, right? And Poison is one of the best ways to damage the clan boss, because it does so much damage, okay? All of these champions are great, some of them are better for clan boss than others, but they're all really, really good champions. Um, I would actually love to test Theodore in clan boss. I think that could be really cool. Uh, I obviously don't have him, but if I don't get him this weekend, maybe I'll do a video testing him on the test server in clan boss. If you use him or in clan boss, let me know. Uh, I would love to hear some feedback. And make sure that you let me know in the comments section who I left off this list. Who did I snub, okay? Now, I don't really want to go through all of those kits, because I feel like that would take a long time. But you can flip over the game if you're not familiar with any of those champions. Now, at the lower end of the list for clan boss, I would put Urigrim, Venomage, Rowan... Urticata, and Nethril. I would rate all of the other ones higher than that, okay? Now, you might be saying, where's my Draco? And that's because he's on the Decreased Defense and Weaken list. Decreased Defense and Weaken are both really important for your clan boss damage. That's why, most of the time, I'm recommending Fane, okay? Um, Fane really needs to be in your team the majority of the time, unless you have somebody else on this list. Draco, Leorius, Venus, Bellinor, Fane, Sawai, Rugnor, and Gentoro. And those are all crazy good damage dealers, okay? A lot of times you only get to pick one 
damage dealer, and that should be from this list. This decreased defense and weaken list are also going to do a tons of damage, okay? They're giving themselves damage, and they're giving your team damage with the decreased defense and weaken. Obviously, we know Draco's amazing, okay? Um, but, you know, that's one of the main reasons why is because he does decrease defense and weaken, he hits hard, and he does poisons. And that's a lot of what this list of champions does here. Next up, we have ally attack or counter attack. If you can fit this in your team, you will be doing very well. Longbeard, Farrakhan, Lanicus, Cardial, Creela, Valkyrie, Martyr, Skullcrusher, and the new guy, Lonatheril, who I'm the only one in the world who thinks that he's going to be okay, apparently. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to finish that fusion and use him on my account. I don't know what to tell you. So, <clears throat> I think that a lot of clan boss teams these days don't have these champions in them. However, I have been just like re-noticing the power of these champions again with, um, what's his face? With uh, Helicath. Because in a lot of these Helicath teams that I'm building, I'm using Farrakhan and Skullcrusher sometimes in the same team, okay? And so they just, they do the same thing that Seeker does, basically. Instead of increasing your turn meter so you get extra attacks, you get extra attacks by counterattacking or ally attacking, right? So both, all of these types of champions are great, okay? And then last but not least is your sole DPS champion. Ninja, Turvold, Brachus, Mashald, Geo, Brogni, and actually Shazar. Um, I did I did a build this this week with Lord Shazar and a Helicath team, and he worked out really, really well. So I feel like I'm missing somebody important from this list but I'm probably snubbing more than one person. So let me know who that is so that I can update this list. And I will be putting this on my website as well for your future reference, but you can always click back to this video. Now, the point of this list is if you have nobody in your team from this list, adding someone from this list to your team is a great way to go from a two key to a one key. For example, if you're using normal Kale as your damage dealer, upgrading to Draco might be the difference between a 2-key and a 1-key, right? I mean, that's an extreme example, of course. But the champions in your team, they matter a lot. And upgrading them can make a huge difference for you. Okay, so we have what team you're using what champions are in that team, and then the third thing that I want to mention is how your champions are geared, okay? Um, let me pull up my long beard, because I feel like he's not geared that well for me. Okay, I lied. He's not that bad. Uh, but he is kind of slow. Okay, he's kind of slow. Is there anybody on my account who's geared as a good example here? I thought it was Longbeard, and I thought I was good and prepped for this. Maybe this guy? Yeah, okay, this this is a perfect example. Holstering here, I was testing in Fire Knight. I didn't like it. I don't want to do that. I, you know, I saw some other teams floating around. It's not for me, but it was fun for an hour to mess around with him. Holstering is obviously not going to be in your clan boss team, but pretend this is Longbeard or somebody, okay? When you take a look at his build here, you can see we don't have 100% crit rate, we have very low crit damage, and we have a very low attack stat, okay? And this is very common for the first build on a champion like Fane, for example. When I'm doing takeovers, this is what the builds look like a lot. Like, we are just getting to the desired speed, and oftentimes we can't build them for damage, but that's still enough to get you a two-key, okay? When you want to one-key, you need to get damage stats on all of your champions, okay? Let's use some man-eaters as an example here, and I'll pull out both of my man-eaters, and we have the pain keeper. And then is my seeker out as well? I think the seeker's out already. So 
Um, let's take a look at the Draco. The Draco is easier to build, but still not actually easy. In my team, Draco has to be over 217 speed. Okay, so you can see here, like, there's room for me to improve my Draco damage, but I want him in a Relentless set and some kind of attack boosting set, like Cruel Offense or Fatal, okay? That's what I need in order to make the most damage from this uh, in my team. Some, some champions you can't put in Relentless, but Draco in my team, you can, okay? So, I can still work on this build. I have not re-geared him in quite a while, so maybe I will try to do that today, okay? But, this is still pretty decent stats. Like you can see here, 5,600 attack. That's a crazy amount different than the 3,000 on Holstring, right? I don't have a 100% crit rate. I know, I know. But I do have a decent amount of crit damage, but it's not that good. Like, this should be 250. This should be 250. Um, so let's take a look at my man eaters. Let's take a look at my man eaters. They are right here. Here's the faster one. Okay, the faster one is 269. And again, I don't have a hundred percent crit rate on him, so that's something I should work on. 303100 attack on man eater is actually very good. Okay. One of the main ways that you get your damage dealers to do more damage is raising their attack stat. Maneater starts at 837, whereas Draco's almost double that, okay? And then Maneater number two actually should have some better stats. 91, 243, 3300 attack. But you can see, like, I still have room to improve here. I still have room to improve. But I'm already one king with these stats, okay? I'm already one king with these stats. Now I have two Seekers. This is the clan boss one. This is, no, this is the clan boss one. This is for a video I did, I think. Anyway, yes, that's true, that's true. Okay, so here's the clan boss one. Uh, we're gonna put like an attack thing on him so I know. All right, so the attack one is the clan boss one. Again, very difficult to get his attack stat up, but 3K attack. 100% crit rate, 240 crit damage. This is pretty good stats, okay? And then finally, on my Pain Keeper, she does not really need good damaging stats, but I tried, you know, I tried. Like, she just doesn't do a lot of damage, so a lot of times what you would do to increase her damage is put her in a toxic set. If you don't fill your debuff bar, on your clan boss team, putting somebody in a toxic set is like a hidden fourth way to do more damage in clan boss. I've had teams like if you use Bellinor in your team, you can do two toxic sets. You know what I mean? You can put multiple champions in a toxic set um, if you're not using a lot of debuffs and you're just using raw power. Turbold's another example of that as well. So those are the main ways to transition from a one key to a two key. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments below and help me out. Let's fill, uh, let's flesh out my list because I know for sure I forgot some people. So let me know who I forgot. Let me know if you have any other tips to help other players transition from a one key to a two key. And I'll see you tomorrow for another shard pull video. Hopefully we can get Theodore. Good luck on your shard pulls. I hope your fusion is going well if you're trying for it. And I will see you guys in the next video.